Hey guys, I'm Cliff, top pro on Thumbtack, owner of ARCC Builders in San Francisco. Before we get started, I wanted to talk about some of the supplies you're going to need. A slanted brush, a roller, a roller nap, a paint tray, a couple rolls of tape, a paint pail, paint mixers, primer, and of course, your paint. Let's talk a little bit more about the supplies. First, a slanted brush. It's good for cutting in, touch-ups, baseboards, and any kind of small painted areas that you will need done. The tape is going to be used to cover straight lines, make sure you have your baseboards covered and you'll have your angles on the walls covered. It's important to use the paint mixer to mix the paint right before you actually start painting or else you're not going to have the consistency on your walls, on your ceilings or even on your baseboards. Be sure to check your walls if it's textured or flat and when you get to the store make sure you describe to them which walls you have so you can get the right nap. Here we have the primer. It's very important you have it to prevent mildew and actually to make all your walls consistent of the same color. And last, the paint. Flat based paint is good for rooms with a lot of lighting where you don't want to see any reflections. Semi gloss is kind of a little of both. It's a little glossy and has a little non gloss more on the flat side. And gloss of course is perfect for rooms that don't get enough light and you need a little reflection with. An important thing for you to know is do you want latex paint or oil based paint? If you're painting any walls inside your house it's always best to use latex paint. Now let's prep our room for painting. Avoiding paint accidents is all about preparation. Cover everything you don't want to get paint on. Move large pieces of furniture to the center of the room and drape with plastic. Dust cobwebs off the walls using a duster and then wipe them with a damp towel. Allow to dry completely. Remove all light fixtures and electrical outlet covers. Cover them with tape so that dust and paint can't get in. Apply painter's tape anywhere you want a straight edge. Along baseboards, at connecting corners of walls and where wall and ceiling meet. The taping off process should take a non-professional about two hours for a standard room. Last, tape plastic onto the floor along the bottom of the baseboard. Ideally, you have plastic covering the entire floor. When taping, you want to use longer pieces versus shorter pieces so you can have a straighter edge throughout the whole wall. And you can run your finger through to make sure the tape is tight. So what is primer and why is it important? You have to prime the walls or it just won't turn out right. Use a roller to apply the primer, then finish in the edges with a paintbrush. The primer coat doesn't have to be perfect. You just want a smooth coat covering everything you'll paint over later. If you put on primer, you want to go up and down, making letters, uh, like a W or an M. Open windows and turn on fan to aid in drying airing out the smell. Wait two hours to make sure it's dry. As long as it doesn't get on your fingers when you touch the wall, it's good to go. Cutting in. This step takes a lot of time and focus, but it is not the time to rush. You're basically ready to go, but it's a good idea to take a moment to make sure all your tape and plastic is still in good shape. Steer your paint for about 30 seconds to make sure it's well blended. Pour paint, taking care not to fill it too full. Use your slanted brush to cut in the color anywhere your roller won't be able to reach, such as where the walls connect at corners, along the baseboards and the ceiling. Do this before putting any color on the main part of the wall. You're basically painting a border square around the walls. Make the border about four inches thick and in all areas. So when you paint, you want to cut in with the brush first because there's a lot of places that rollers can't get into. So you first want to dip and just put a little on because even if you push down your tape, sometimes paint can still leak through. So you want to go work up right next to the tape and work your way into it and make strokes up and down until you've covered the whole area. Once completed, dive right into rolling and paint all the walls. Roll your roller brush into the paint well of your roller tray. Then roll a couple times on the upper part of the tray to remove excess paint. Roll the paint onto the wall in a tight W formation. Envision a long, tall zigzag with no spaces in between that runs from top to bottom and back to the top. If the roller feels too wet, your paint will go on too thick. Try rolling off the more excess paint into the roller tray. Make your way around the room, one wall at a time. Wait two or three hours for the paint to dry. It's not necessary to cut in your corners again for a second coat. Just roll on the paint when you are certain that the first coat is completely dry. After the second coat is applied, 
Wait another two to three hours. Last but not least, I wanna share my advice for cleanup. When removing tape, pull it toward your body so it comes out at an angle and doesn't peel any paint off the walls. Wash your paint brushes with warm or hot water and be careful not to let paint clog your drains. Never pour excess paint down your drains. Hang your brushes to dry for about a week, then store somewhere safe. Overall, your project is likely to take two full days, including shopping, prep, painting, dry time, and cleanup. If you don't have two days to spare or get stuck, remember you can always go to thumbtack.com to find professionals like me. Just tell Thumbtack what you need, get connected with the skilled pro, compare the pro's reviews, and hire a pro that's right for you. Have a great day and good luck painting.